Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Refactoring UI. Today we're going to be taking a look at a submission from my friend Ben Orenstein. Ben, along with his friends Joel Sutherland and Spencer Dixon, are starting a new project called Tuple, which is a screen sharing tool made specifically for pair programming. And to kick things off, they created this landing page to generate some interest. This is a project that I'm really excited about using myself, so I was really happy to help them out with this. Now, when I first saw this site, I thought it looked a bit familiar. Wait a second, this looks just like Adam Wathen's Advanced View Components Design course site. For shame, Ben. That's okay though. To be honest, I did the same thing when I started designing. Copying designs you like is a great way to learn and start paying attention to details that you wouldn't have noticed otherwise. But with that said, we're going to do a few things to both deviate from this design and find a few ways to improve it. So let's dive in. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is the placement of this signup form. I actually like this treatment of the offset panel and box shadow. It's a great way to make important content like this pop off the page. However, for this particular design, it's interfering with the content a bit. See, we have this really strong headline here. It really pulls the reader in and can compel them to read on. But before they get a chance to, they're being encouraged to sign up for something and they don't really know what it is yet. It's not until the body that it begins to go into more detail about the project. So we're going to move this sign up section below this first block of text that goes into that detail about the project. That helps a bit, but the background color in the header is still dividing the headline and the body. So we're going to remove that and invert the text so it feels more like an article. Okay, now I appreciate that the text is constrained here. A common mistake that I see developers make is paragraphs filling the entire width of the page container. But right now it's pretty narrow, especially for the size of the font they're using. For a comfortable reading width, it's recommended to have 70 to 80 characters on a line. So we're actually going to open this up a bit. Now, because we removed the background color that divided the titles and the body into two different sections, the title's center alignment is feeling a bit awkward. So we're going to left align it with the body to sort of glue them together and make it feel like a more natural transition. Okay, great. Now, this is a really strong headline, but at the moment, the typography isn't doing a really great job at delivering it. It sort of feels small and unopinionated, so we're going to increase the size of it. We're also going to get rid of the bold weight on the second line of text to give the main headline a little more emphasis. And this design is using the system font stack, or more specifically, as you see here, San Francisco, which is Apple's operating system font. San Francisco comes in a variety of weights, including heavy and black, which are much more louder and expressive, especially for headlines like this. So we're going to use black for this headline to bring a little more energy to it. Okay, so the background color that created the header section that we removed earlier did add a lot of liveliness to the page. So we wanna try and reintroduce it by adding hints of the color. Now, a trick I often like to do is add thick accent borders. In this case, across the top of the page. It's just a quick way to bring life to an otherwise bland looking design. Now, up until this point, Tuple hasn't really defined their visual identity. They just stole the color from Adam's advanced view course site. So let's explore some new color options. Picking colors can be tricky, especially when you're blindly picking from a color picker. So one thing I like to do is limit my palette. Now, one way you can do that is by going to Dribbble's color page. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description. There they have a small-ish selection of colors, and by selecting one of the colors, you're provided with high quality examples. You can also filter the results by showing the most popular shots, and it's great because all of the examples are in context of a real app that was designed by a professional designer. So for this site, I'm going to try finding something close to this indigo color. And I think this example looks pretty good, so we're just going to roll with it. Okay, before we go any further, I recently had the pleasure of designing Tuple's logo. So we're going to put it in the design at the top above the headline. Okay, let's take a closer look at the styling of the text here. So right now, they've bolded a lot of points, sort of highlighting the features. It's an interesting idea, but because they're trying to make so much stand out, Barely anything stands out at all. So we're going to remove the bolded text. They highlighted the features down a bit further anyway, and we'll be addressing that shortly. Now we still want to give some words emphasis, but in a different way. 
One thing I like to do is italicize certain words to give the text more of a conversational tone. The trick here is to read your text very carefully, even out loud if you have to, and listen to yourself as you read it to see if certain words jump out. For example, for the headline here, I may read it as, remember when Slack stole Screen Hero from us? See how I put emphasis on the word stole? By italicizing it, it helps the reader use a similar tone. There are a few instances where these opportunities come up in the text, so we're going to go through it and do the same thing I just did with the headline. Okay, because this now reads much more like an article, we're going to try a few things to make it feel like an article. One thing that I see quite a bit in print design and every now and then in websites is the use of drop caps. You do this by taking the first letter of an article and letting it sneak onto the other lines of text below it. This is a great way to lead into an article and just make it a bit more interesting. In this case, I'm going to contain it in a circle using our new brand color just to add a bit of liveliness to it. In addition to the drop cap, another technique that you'll often see in print design is the use of small caps on the first few words. Some fonts actually have small caps built in, but you can also fake it by reducing the font size so the top of the caps aligns with the top of the lowercase letters at the regular size. I would also up the weight to the next available option so it feels much more balanced and give it a bit of letter spacing so it's easier to read. Okay, this is really coming along, so let's move on to our signup form. First, let's update the color of this button to match our new color. And because this is no longer overlapping anything, we're going to remove the container. And now that we've opened up the width of the page, we're going to make this an input group instead of two different components. Now, because this is no longer a standalone signup form and we have the paragraph leading into it, I encourage the guys to make this text sound a little more human and make it feel more attached to the text above it. So we're going to replace this with this new sentence that's been provided. We're also going to keep the bold weight just to highlight this section a little more. Let's also give the input group a drop shadow to reintroduce that nice depth that the container provided. And because the input is gray and we gave it a drop shadow, it's looking a little bit muddy around it. So instead we're going to make the input white and make the background a subtle gray. But we're not going to make the entire background gray because the white feels really nice at the top and really helps that headline pop a bit more. Instead, we're going to make it a very subtle gradient that starts with white and is a subtle gray by the time you get to the input. Okay, let's move on to the details section. Now, one thing I like to do to break the page up and make it a bit more interesting is introduce different background colors on each section. I don't want to introduce brand new colors, but just work with the ones I'm already using on the page. For example, for this section, I'm going to use the new indigo color and invert the text with it. And for the frequently asked questions section, I'm going to make it dark like the current text color. Okay, so here are the main features they are striving to build. Some pretty important information, but right now it's not very scannable. So this is actually another thing I encourage them to reevaluate, and I ask them to provide more clear titles to each of these points and just use the current text to provide a little bit more detail. And to make the titles pop a bit more, we're going to de-emphasize that description text. Now, one way you can do this is by reducing the opacity a bit. This certainly makes it stand back a bit, but what I like to do is hand pick a color from an HSB color picker by moving it up on the Y axis. And in addition to this, to make that text look a little more vibrant, I like to adjust the hue a bit. Nothing too much, about 10 degrees should suffice. And what this does is adds a bit of glow to the text, but still manages to look secondary to the white title text. Okay, let's take a closer look at these icons. Right now, they're just generic icons, which is not bad. It's much better than using the default bolded list, but maybe we can find some that better represent what the message is saying. So another product that I'm really excited about are these Streamline icons by Vincent Lemoyne. He's been working on Streamline icons for quite a while and is about to launch a major update, Streamline 3.0, which now has two weights, plus a fill version of every icon in the set, 
totaling 30,000 icons. I'll be sure to share a link in the description. There's pretty much an icon for every possible scenario, so I went ahead and found some that feel better aligned with the messaging here. And now that we've opened up the width of this page, we're going to put these points into two columns. Okay, let's move down to the frequently asked questions section. Right now, the questions and answers aren't laid out in such a way that maximizes the space, especially now that we've opened it up a bit. Hierarchy doesn't need to take a top to bottom approach. For example, by using color and weight, we can use a two column layout that can be just as effective and eliminate the awkward reading width. We're also going to give the answers the same color treatment as the details section, just to make the questions stand out a bit more. Now, because we created this two column layout, it's not quite clear how the questions and answers are divided. The title did a good job at making clear boundaries. So we're going to add a border at the top of each. This helps divide it and make the questions and answers feel more attached, sort of containing the two. Okay, let's just adjust the spacing a bit and that pretty much wraps everything up. So let's just compare it with what we started with. Now you can go ahead and see the site live. I coded it up using Tailwind CSS so you can also see the mobile breakpoints. And while you're there, feel free to sign up to get project updates. I for one am really excited to see what they deliver. If you enjoyed the tips in this video, be sure to check out my Twitter page at Steve Shoger, where I regularly share practical tips that you can use on your own design. Now, if you want to see the sketch files to the design in the video, I've included a link to download the sketch files in the description. And if you enjoyed this video and want to receive updates when more content like this is published, be sure to sign up at refactoringui.com.